The ultimate act of concealed resistance, you might argue, is to physically bury an object in the ground where nobody may find it again. You may have seen this object on display in the galleries here at the museum, but I'm willing to bet that you will have never seen it in this position before. It's the Merrowy Head, an over sized uh, bronze uh, sculpture of the uh, Roman Emperor um, Augustus. I make no secret of the fact that um, when we were planning this exhibition, I wanted to dig up the floor of this gallery and physically bury it in the ground. Um, turns out I wasn't allowed to do that. It's a, it's a grade one listed building or something. Um, but nevertheless, we've been able to at least kind of sink it into this plinth to evoke the contempt with which Rome's enemies once held the empire and its erstwhile leader. This was the Kushite kingdom, a sort of quasi-client kingdom of Rome based in present-day Su uh, Sudan. Um, and they fell out with the, the neighboring Roman garrisons in Egypt. They attacked um, and they threw down uh, its, uh, their statues and dragged them off as booty. This was most likely one of those statues or part of one of those statues that was dragged off. Uh, this was in sort of 24 BC. They dragged it hundreds of miles south to their city of Meroe, where rather than displaying it as booty, they dug a hole in the ground and uh, buried it face down. Why did they do this? Well, most likely um, because where it was placed was at the foot of a victory shrine. So everyone who walked into the shrine would trample over the head of the defeated enemy. Iconoclasm of statues um, has always happened. Um, this, is, this is proof of that. Uh, and it continues to happen today when um, American forces took Baghdad uh, in Iraq in 2003. They threw down the statues of Saddam Hussein. Likewise, after the fall of Mama uh, Gaddafi um, in Libya, uh, the statues were ritually torn down and destroyed. That act of iconoclasm um, is, in a way, no different to this act of iconoclasm.